all cases are marked top end to avoid incorrect handling during transport and storage. Carefully inspect the bushings after delivery to make sure there is no shipping damage to the case or bushing. Check the packing lists to ensure all parts have been delivered. Certain parts, such as the shield, are delivered in separate cases. Use two clean lifting slings when lifting the bushing out of the case. The lifting slings must not be placed round the sheds on the insulator, as this may damage the sheds. Support the bushings at the same points as in the case, or with blocks under the top housing and flange. When handling bushings of smaller size, the cellular plastic blocks from the case may be used. Never let the bushing rest on the porcelain insulator. Place GSA bushings and other types with silicone insulators on stands in the same way as for porcelain bushings. The bushing should never rest on the insulator. When lifting bushings type G-O-E-K, place the lifting sling as close to the flange as possible. Make sure the bushing is balanced. Save the cases and use them when repacking the bushings. It's important that bushings are packed in the same way as when they were delivered. Bushings are routinely tested before delivery. During testing, the bushing is immersed in oil which may result in oil spots on the bottom of the case. Furthermore, Vaseline is used for lubrication of threads. At some temperatures, the Vaseline may appear as oil. Carefully inspect the porcelain to make sure no damage was caused during shipping. If any damage is discovered, refer to the applicable product information to decide what action to take. Small defects within the tolerance do not affect the function of the bushing and are considered normal in accordance with the current IEC standard. Sometimes the porcelain varies in colour. This is considered normal in accordance with the current IEC standard. Bushings type GOEK 2550 come with a separate expansion tank. Use the existing lifting eye to lift the expansion tank. If the expansion tank is not fitted with a lifting eye, attach a lifting sling round the tank. The sealing plug must not be exchanged for a detachable lifting eye. Make sure that the lifting sling won't come off. Bushings type GOEK 2550 are already filled with oil, pressurised and connected to their expansion tank when they leave the factory. These bushings are delivered with the valves on both the expansion tank and the bushing flange in the open position. They must remain in this position or the function of the bushing is jeopardised. Verify the oil level in the expansion tank by checking the oil level indicator. Bushings type GOE are delivered with a separate shield. There are three different connection alternatives. In one option, the bushing is without a draw rod. The shield is mounted directly on the lower part of the bushing. Place the shield on the bushing and turn it to the stop position by pressing down on the springs. Turn the shield back slightly to make sure that the heads of the screws are in the locking position. In another option, the bushing has a draw rod with four threaded holes. The shield is mounted in the same way as in the previous example. Finally, there are variants where the draw rod has six threaded holes. For these variants, the draw rod has to be dismantled 
because the shield is mounted from the top. We're now going to take a look at the assembly of a bushing type GOE with a draw rod on a 500 kilovolt reactor. The draw rod is mounted in the bushing on delivery and must be removed before assembly. This example shows a draw rod where the shield is mounted directly on the draw rod. Start by loosening the lower part of the draw rod. Connect the connector from the winding of the transformer. It's very important that the connectors are the right length. Mount the shield. Carefully clean and inspect the inside of the center hole before mounting the bushing. Some larger bushings are furnished with a compensation device at the top of the bushing's center hole. Place the draw rod inside the bushing with the help of a pull-through cord. Here you see how the compensating device is put in place. Attach lifting slings to the lifting device before lifting the bushing. If no lifting device is available, you may lift the bushing by applying a lifting sling around the insulator just below the top housing. Make sure you don't damage the insulator sheds in the process. When lifting the bushing during assembly, a soft surface, such as a rubber mat or a plank of wood, should be placed under the bottom end of the bushing. Support wheels may be used when lifting larger bushings. These facilitate lifting. When lifting the bushings to a set angle, attach the tackle to the bushing. Measure the angle of the flange and adjust the incline by adjusting the length of one of the slings. Lower the pull-through cord through the bushing's center hole. Attach the pull-through cord to the draw rod. Clean the porcelain that would be placed inside the transformer. Attach the draw rod to the pre-mounted lower part. Anchor the bushing to the flange of the transformer cover. Earth the bushing by applying a flexible cable between the earthing screw and a corresponding connection point on the flange. This prevents electrical discharges between the bushing flange and the transformer tank under normal service conditions. A breakdown will occur if the bushing is not properly earthed. Tighten all screw joints crosswise by applying the recommended torque. The draw rod, with the shield and connectors, is held in position by the pull-through cord. Attach the draw rod with a plate and a nut. Thereafter, loosen the pull-through cord. Tighten the screw joint with a torque of 10 newton meters. It's very important to lubricate the threads with grease during this step. Before the draw rod is positioned, measure the distance A. 
tighten the joints to obtain the correct extension of the draw rod according to the product information, resulting in the measure B. The tightening torque should be between 70 and 140 newton meters. In order to obtain the correct pressure and low contact resistance, the following must be carried out. Dismount the terminal stud and carefully clean the contact and gasket surfaces. The outer terminals may be oxidized. If this is the case, rub them with Scotch-Brite. For better results, soak the Scotch-Brite in water. Pre-assemble the retaining ring and the O-ring on the terminal stud and lubricate them with the recommended grease. An additional O-ring is supplied for final installation. Grease all bolt threads and underneath the head with the recommended grease. Insert the M8 screws with the conical spring washers and plane washers which hold the retaining ring. Tighten by hand to press the gasket in place. Insert and tighten the M10 screws with plane washers which press the stud against the inner terminal. It's very important to tighten the screws crosswise and apply the recommended torque. Start with the M10 screws that are the electrical joint. Then tighten the M8 screws crosswise applying the recommended torque. Note how the retaining ring is pulled up against the stud and thereby guarantees the seal. The function of the draw rod is to guarantee the correct current path of the bushing, which goes by the outer terminal, flexible connection, conductor tube, bottom nut and out through the bottom contact. For bushings with two oil level glasses, the oil level at 20 degrees Celsius should be between the two glasses. For bushings with one oil level glass, the oil level at room temperature should be in the middle of the oil level glass. For bushings with a magnetic oil level indicator, make sure the oil level does not reach the minimum level. The bushing is sealed and tightness tested at the time of manufacture. Therefore, it's unusual to have to fill it with oil. If you do have to fill it with oil, this should be done when the temperature is between plus 5 and plus 35 degrees Celsius. It's recommended that the sealing plug be fitted with a new gasket after the oil level has been adjusted. Tighten the sealing plug by applying the recommended torque. When a bushing is mounted at an angle, a prism oil level gauge should face the side and magnetic oil level gauges should face downwards on the underside of the bushing. After mounting, it's recommended that the capacitance and dissipation factor be measured. Connect a measuring bridge between the outer terminal and the test tab. The capacitance C1 between the bushing conductor and the test tap and capacitance C2 between the test tap and earth are marked on the rating plate. The corresponding dissipation factor is stated as well. C2 and the dissipation factor are highly dependent on the surrounding parts and it's not possible to give a nominal value valid for all service conditions. On the other hand, C1 and the dissipation factor can be achieved with good accuracy. The test tap must always be earthed during operation, which is done by remounting the test tap cover. This is the other kind of test tap. The test tap cover serves the same function here as in the previous example. 
Horizontally mounted bushings must be completely filled with oil during operation as they communicate with the transformer's oil system. When the bushing is dismantled from the transformer, it's completely filled with oil. Drain a small amount of oil, tighten the flange hole with the gasket and cover with the plug supplied. Adjust to the correct oil level. Oil-filled bushings can be transported and stored horizontally for up to six months. If storage is to exceed six months, the condenser body may dry out. It's therefore recommended that the bushing be raised to an angle of at least seven degrees. This does not apply to dry insulated bushings that can be stored horizontally. These bushings should be surrounded by a sealed moisture proof wrapping in their original case. Keep the bushings dry and clean and protected against mechanical damage. Please keep in mind that this program does not show a complete